Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan, and today I'm going to be picking one MVP from every single NHL team so far this season. Now, I say so far, we are pretty much all the way through this regular season, a few games left for each team in the NHL, but we pretty much can make out what the playoff teams are and what the MVPs as well are for each team as well. And when it comes to the league-wide standings and your favorite NHL team, who do I see as the most valuable players right now in the NHL and the most valuable valuable player, the MVP for your favorite NHL team. Watch till the end for all of my MVP picks, all of the rankings, and hit that subscribe button if you're new. 60% of the people that are watching the videos are not subscribed, so every bit helps, and we'd love to have you in the grab gang heading into the playoffs. We're going to be doing daily hockey streams and daily hockey content. And of course, as you go through this video, let me know if you change anything, what picks you would end up making in the comments down below, what picks you would go with, and what your MVPs would be as well. But we're going to start out today in reverse alphabetical order start with the Jets the Cavs the Golden Knights and so on and so forth to basically give this video a little more spice than it normally would be but I already have a lot of spicy takes in this video so watch out for that but we're gonna start off the Winnipeg Jets MVP for the 2021 season and I think there's three really good candidates here for the Jets and even though two of them come in the four group which they kind of counteract each other in Nikolai Ethers and Mark Shifley my main MVP is going to end up going to main goaltender Connor Hellebuck now Connor Hellebuck it's no surprise I'm a big fan of over these past couple of years. I thought he should have been in the MVP conversation last year. He was that good. And I think going into this year, he hasn't been as important for the Jets, but he's still been an incredibly important player for them. And even though the stats don't show up a 917 save percentage, he's still been on an amazing level. He's third in terms of goals he'd have expected, only behind Mark Andre Fleury and Andre Vasilevsky. He's an elite company and is still one of the league's best goaltenders. Then going on to the Washington Capitals, though, next up. I think there's quite a few options here, just like the Jets, but I think the main one will have to go to Nicholas Backstrom. 48 points in 48 games played, and has also been pretty good on defense this year, which I think has definitely been noticeable. The Caps' defense has not been great this year, but Backstrom has been providing that a lot throughout his play, and offensively, he's been as good as advertised. He's Nicholas Backstrom, you know what you're getting, but he's been on a different level this year, and a different level in terms of value, too. Now, continuing the trend of amazing goaltenders this year, we're going to go to the Vegas Golden Knights MVP, and for me, it's really obvious it's going to go to Marc-Andre Fleury. Now, I mean, there's a couple other options you could definitely go for. Shea Theodore has been fantastic for them this year, especially recently, but I think Marc-Andre Fleury just has the most valuable collected throughout this season. He started off great and has continued to be great. He has a 926 save percentage this year, is second in goal, seem to have expected, which has been unbelievable for what he was like just a year ago. And Fleury was a guy that I thought had a great first season in Vegas, but since then wasn't really on an elite level. But this year he has been on an elite level, and especially considering his age, I think that's super impressive. And for Vegas, it's been super valuable for them. But we're going to continue the goaltending train and go on to the Vancouver Canucks most valuable player. And for me, I'll also have to go for Thatcher Demko. Now, even though Brain Holpe has been great since the Canucks outbreak has finally settled, uh, Thatcher Demko has been the most valuable player for them throughout the this year. He's only played 26 games, but is right now second, fourth in goals they'd have expected, which I think is pretty impressive considering the games play he's played, but he has a 917 save percentage on this Canucks team, which considering how many defensive black holes they have on that defense is pretty astounding. But now, bucking the trend of the goaltenders being the most valuable players on their team, we're now going to go on to the Toronto Maple Leafs and go to the easy pick here in Austin Matthews. Now, I was tempted to say Matt Martin, but sadly, he's not with us anymore. He's on the Islanders, actually. <laughs> Why did it seem like I make? Why did it seem like I? Why did I make it seem like he was dead? Anyways, uh, <laughs> going on to Austin Matthews has been pretty good this year. Forty-four games played, thirty-four goals, fifty-eight points, forty-five of them coming on even strength. He's been an absolute madman five on five. But then going on to the Tampa Bay Lightning's most valuable player, it's also a pretty easy pick in the best goaltender in the world right now in Andre Vasilevsky. Now Andre Vasilevsky is finally proving himself as that number one best goaltender in the world hype that we kind of saw him really start to get a couple of years back, but he transitioned that amazing 2020 playoffs into this year where he has been incredible for them. When he's not playing and it's Curtis McElhinney, it is chaos for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Vasilevsky is the best goaltender in the world right now and should win the Vezza Trophy as well this year. 
And next up, going to the St. Louis Blues most valuable player for the 2021 season, I'm going to go with the captain in Ryan O'Reilly. And in some cases, I think going for the most or the best goal scorer, the best point getter on the team is a little bit lazy. In Ryan O'Reilly, in this case, I think it is definitely deserved. He has been solid so far this year, especially recently, where I think he's kind of taken the team on his back. And even though the underlying numbers haven't been as, as impressive as they have been in years past, he's still a great player and among the best centermen and best defensive forwards in the entire league. Then going on to the San Jose Sharks and most valuable player, I think this is a key example of why you should not just go as the main point getter for the MVP for each team, because if you did, it would be Evander Kane for the Sharks, which I don't think is quite the case. For my MVP for the Sharks, I'm going to go with Centerman Tomas Hurdle. Now, in terms of the points, it wouldn't quite reflect what I'm going at here, but in terms of puck protection and in terms of play driving, Tomas Hurdle has been one of the best Sharks for a very, very long time, but defensively, he's really stu stu stepped up and in terms of when he's on the ice, there's really nothing going on in the defensive zone. He is a great shutdown defense or the centerman though so far this year and a guy that if San Jose didn't have wouldn't even be close to the playoff race at this point. And next up going to the Pittsburgh Penguins MVP for this year, I'm going to go with another captain in Sidney Crosby and it's not just the way Sidney Crosby is playing. It's just how consistent he has been. I mean, Sidney Crosby is consistent. We all know this. But this year, he's just been on a different level offensively and defensively. I thought, especially before this year, in the last couple of seasons before this one, defensively, he's taken a little bit of a step back, a little bit of a decline. But this year, he's been on a different level. And the overall game has been among the best in the league this year. Could be in the top five in terms of the Hart Trophy rankings. But then going on to the Philadelphia Flyers and the Pennsylvania rivalry, I'm going to go to another captain in Claude Giroux. Now, that's another case where if you're just looking by the points, you might not pick Giroux. But to me, Giroux is the only one for Philadelphia that's constantly putting his all out there, constantly trying his best. And it's such a shame that the Philadelphia Flyers have been the way they have been this year because Claude Giroux simply put as captain of the Flyers, deserves so much better. Next up though, we're gonna go to the Ottawa Senators most valuable player. And I don't think there's one player that specifically stands out. But I think the closest one to that is going to go to Brady Kachuk, who has once again had a really good year. Now, Brady Kachuk hasn't been stupendous or anything this year, but he's still been among the league's best play drivers. And obviously, that tenacity that the Kachuk family brings, I think, has definitely helped the Ottawa Senators in a lot of ways. But he's a guy that could end up being the captain maybe going into next year. He has that leadership. He has that fun mentality that I think the Ottawa Senators are definitely loving to have, not just now, but in their franchise going forward. But we're now going to move on to the New York Rangers, and this was probably one of the hardest choices I had to make throughout this video. You guys know I like the Rangers quite a bit, but this year specifically, there's two guys that really come to mind as the main ones. Now, I do want to give an honorable mention to Igor Shurkin, who's been incredible this year. But it's between Artemi Panarin and Adam Fox. Artemi Panarin, who might be the best winger in the league, and Adam Fox, who might be the best defenseman in the league this year. There is you could go either way. You could go either way and not be wrong. But for me personally, my MVP for the Rangers this year is going to go to Adam Fox. To me, if I had to pick a Norris Trophy winner right now, it would go to Adam Fox. He's been the best defenseman, in my opinion, in the league this year. And even though a lot of his production has come on the power play, his even strength play has been super valuable for the Rangers and his defensive play. If Adam Fox wasn't on the Rangers, the Rangers are nowhere near close to the playoffs. That defense would be absolutely lost without his presence. Next up, though, we're going to go to the New York Islanders' most valuable player. And talking about lost without him, the Islanders would definitely be lost without their MVP in Matthew Barzal. Now, I do want to say that Semyon Varlamov would be my number two for sure, and he's having another fantastic year for the Isles, but Matt Barzal is that Islanders forward group, and especially if Anders Lee out, without Matthew Barzal too, the Islanders would be almost nowhere to be seen. Matthew Barzal, though, is that Islanders forward group through and through, 39 points in 48 games played, and I just imagine if he was on an offensive system like the Colorado Avalanche, what he would be able to do. He would be among the leads league lead in terms of points he would be up there for sure and would be talked about as one of the best centers in the league but defensively this year has also stepped it up on top of that fantastic and exhilarating offensive game we all know and love but then going on to our next team and uh, i'm gonna go to these new jersey devils who haven't really had too many mvp this this year especially with mackenzie blackwood not really being good all this year sadly my pick is gonna end up going to jesper bratt now Brad has been on an interesting level this year has 
missed some games compared to some other Devils forwards, but I think he's been pretty good. He leads them in points per game, 26 points in 38 games played. Not too bad whatsoever on a New Jersey team that, simply put, cannot win games right now. And next up, we're going to move on to the National Predators MVP for this year. Kind of like Tomas Hurdle, a guy that I don't see getting near enough credit for how good he's been. We're now going to move into the National Predators MVP in UC Soros. Now, I've been a big UC Soros fan for a long, long time, but he's never really put it together as the starter for Nashville until this year. 30 games played, though, a 926 save percentage and 10th in terms of goals state of expected. He's been on a different level this year and is proving those doubters very, very wrong. Now, going on to the Montreal Canadiens. Canadians MVP though and that's another team that just has not had a ton to work with especially recently my MVP though is still going to go to Jeff Petrie even though I, I think he has declined a little bit since the start of the season obviously with some less shooting luck Jeff Petrie is still the best defenseman on that on the Montreal Canadiens by far and is a guy that could still be in the conversation for the Norris Trophy race in terms of points he's definitely up there but in terms of defensive play especially when he's not on the penalty kill I think he's among the not what the Montreal Canadiens really have to offer. Without him, that Canadian's defense would be quite lost as well, just like the Adam Fox situation on the New York Rangers. Oh yeah, I guess I forgot to mention that, of course, I got this last Airbender jersey, which is absolutely amazing, but uh, I digress. <laughs> I just needed to mention that while I got some new water. Anyways, we're going to move on down to the Minnesota Wild Most Valuable Player, and even though I'm a Dallas Stars fan and I do love me some Jason Robertson, the most valuable player for the Minnesota Wild is easily Kirill Kaprizov. I think for this Minnesota Wild team, if they didn't have Kirill Kaprizov, it wouldn't just mean a lot less goals. It would mean just a lot less excitement and a lot less enthusiasm. And I'm not just talking about the fans. I'm talking about the team. You can obviously see the difference that Kirill Kaprizov makes. Everybody loves him as they should because Kirill Kaprizov is an absolute beast. He's an absolute stud. And in my opinion, if we're going right now, should win the Calder Trophy. Next up, they'll go into the LA Kings most valuable player. My pick is going to go to their goaltender in Calvin Peterson. Now, Peterson is a guy that I had my doubts about being a true starter because he was on the older side and you had yet to really make an impact at the NHL level consistently, but this year he has proved me quite a bit wrong and has been fantastic. He's among the best in terms of goals he'd have expected and I think has like a 9-17 save percentage or something on the LA Kings, which considering that defense and considering that overall team, I still think is pretty impressive, but Calvin Peterson is a guy that if he continues to play the way he has, could be a guy that LA could build around as a potential starter with this fantastic core they have going forward. Next up, though, going to the Florida Panthers' most valuable player. This is a guy that has also proven me a little bit wrong this year in Alexander Barkov. Now, he, I think, was kind of in the same situation as a Sidney Crosby, where I think especially these past couple of years defensively has declined quite a bit, but offensively was still at a great level. But this year has combined both of those best worlds and has been at an amazing level. Just like Crosby, I think, should be in the Hart Trophy conversation as the best centers in the league this year. He has been great and a big reason why Florida has had such success this year. Then going on next up to the Edmonton Oilers, the MVP is Connor McDavid. If you don't think he's the best player in the world, get over it. You're wrong. Sorry. Next up. And now going on to the Detroit Red Wings MVP. I mean... <laughs> It's Joffin Bernier, man. I mean, he has a 9-12 save percentage on this Detroit Red Wings team. Dude, if I had a 9-12 save percentage on this Detroit Red Wings team, I'd be asking for $10 million. Yet this Bernier bud is making like $2 million. That's an absolute service. He should get a freaking Nobel Peace Prize for that. My goodness, Bernier's an absolute stud, but we already knew that already. Then going on to the Dallas Stars MVP for the 2021 season. This to me is not an obvious pick. It's between two, Rupe and, and Jason Robertson. But my MVP is going to be Rupe Hintz. Rupe Hintz has been amazing this year amazing this year and still does not get the credit he deserves i think has 38 points in 34 games played last time i checked but rupe has been injured throughout most of this year he's been banged up he's had off games or he's played he's had some games where he just doesn't play and then he'll come in the next game and score a hat trick on you rupe has been one of the weirdest players this year but when he is playing he's one of the best one of the silkiest and one of the most efficient players out there now we're gonna move on to a little bit of a weird one in the columbus blue jackets 
My MVP is going to be Danish stud Oliver Bjorkstrand, but Bjorkstrand has been weird this year and just in his career. I mean, uh, before this year, he was a player that was always a great play driver, great offensive chance generator, but never really quite got a crazy amount of points or a crazy amount of luck. But this year, he's gotten a crazy amount of luck, a crazy amount of points, but isn't quite play driving like he wants used to, which I think is a big reason why Columbus hasn't quite been as affected this year. But he's still a good player, and I think we'll be back to that level next year too so I wouldn't quite worry about that but then going on to the Colorado Avalanche MVP now there's quite a few options here for sure my pick though is going to go to the main one in Nathan McKinnon I mean Nathan McKinnon has been unreal this year and I think also is another underdog in terms of the Hart Trophy conversation but I think defensively especially where most of his improvement has been he has had the best defensive year by far in his career and that's the same way with guys like Miko Rantanen and and guys like Gabriel Landeskog Colorado is playing an um unbelievable level though so far and Nathan McKinnon is no surprise a big reason why then going on to Chicago though and the MVP will pretty much be Patrick Kane now I'm not a big Patrick Kane fan in terms of the overall game defensively he's still not great this year but it can't be denied just how gifted and skilled he is and he does that on a nightly basis but I think his vision and his passing has been on a different level this year the goal scoring hasn't been incredible or anything but his ability to make plays find lanes has been on an even bigger level which is pretty important impressive considering Patrick Kane was probably the best passer and had the best vision of any player in the league before this year. But we're going to go to a pretty hard one in the Carolina Hurricanes next up, and there's like five different MVP choices. My MVP, though, for the Carolina Hurricanes is going to go to Dougie Hamilton. Now, Dougie Hamilton I've always been a huge fan of in terms of the offensive game. He's been, in my opinion, one of the most underrated, solid, and consistent offensive defensemen in the entire NHL, and especially Carolina has been on a bigger and better level. But this year, it's just been even crazier. Now, obviously, being a Jacob Slavin helps, but I think it's helped both defenders involved. And when it comes to Dougie Hamilton, I think he's having the best season of his NHL career. In terms of points, he's been elite, and we already know that. In terms of offense, he's been elite, we already know that. But defensively, it's always been my main gripe. He's always been, at best, decent, but this year he's been one of the, among the Carolina Hurricanes' best shutdown defensemen, and he's been really effective in his own zone, which is definitely great to see. But now going on to the Calgary Flames' most valuable player, my pick is going to go to Elias Lindholm. Now, I think Chris Tanev is a pretty decent second option. He's been super underrated and super consistent this year, but Lindholm has been one the Calgary Flames most consistent offensive players this year and I think that deserves a good more ratio of how much turnover and how much inconsistency that team has had I think Lindholm though has been just a great offensive player since he went to Calgary and a guy that once again is on a good level this year too and then going on to the Buffalo Sabres MVP I mean it's Lena Solmark that's all I have to say but we're going to go to another hard team to pinpoint in terms of the MVP and going to the Boston Bruins. This is a team that has three, maybe even four candidates for the MVP this year. Charlie McAvoy, Brad Marchand, uh, David Pasternak, and Patrice Bergeron. And I think it's between, uh, I think it's personally between McAvoy and Marchand. Both of those guys have been an, an amazing level. Marshawn in terms of points and in terms of just being one of the best offensive forwards in the league continues to be that way. With McAvoy, he's taking that next step and in my opinion, will likely be a top three vote for me in terms of the Norris Trophy. And I would go with basically a tie for them. If I had to give a little bit of an edge, I would go Brad Marshawn, but... McAvoy has been fantastic too, and I think both deserve some credit here. But now going on to the Arizona Coyotes, my most valuable player for them is going to end up being Jacob Chikorin. And I've been screaming Chikorin's name for a long time. He's one of the most underrated, solid defensemen out there. And it seems that now he's finally getting points. People are starting to understand how good he is, which of course it ha is how it is, especially since he's on the Arizona Coyotes. But he's leading the defenseman in goals. He's been such a good offensive player this year, on top of being one of the most sneaky and story defensive defensemen you'll ever find. Chikorin is definitely among the best and could be a top 10 defenseman by the time my rankings end up coming out this year. But now going on to the final team in the Anaheim Ducks. Once again, another team that doesn't have many MVPs, but my pick is going to go to young forward in Max Comtois. Now, Comtois has just had a great year overall. Really started off hot, and yes, it's cooled back down a bit, but he leads the team in terms of goals, points, game-winning goals. He's just been on a great level this year, and Anaheim would definitely be even more lost offensively without him 
than they already are, which is pretty sad. But that'll be it for today, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any videos whatsoever. Comment down below, though, what you agree and disagree with my MVP picks and who is your MVP from your favorite NHL team. Let me know all your picks and rankings. Make sure you share this video with your friends, get the rankings out there, and click on this card for all my Hockey Reggies content right on the playlist. Hopefully you're having a fantastic day, though, and hopefully you enjoyed. My name is Nathan, and I'll see you in the next video or stream. Have a fantastic day, y'all, fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video or stream. Goodbye.